screen is visible now yes yes yeah so uh, today my topic for discussion is uh, the <coughs> normal anatomy and views in head ultrasound uh, so we will just a second so i think uh, sorry actually i am out of town right now so i think i am audible and my slides are visible properly is it okay so then i'll start with yes yes, yes. yes. yeah thank you so much uh, so i think this uh, has been uh, discussed previously also but just to brush up uh, the ultrasound is the name given to the frequency of the sound waves which are over 20000 cycles per second that is 20 kilohertz so human hearing what we uh, this is the normal human hearing which is between 20 to 20 hertz to 20000 hertz and any frequency of sound which is above 20000 hertz is called the ultrasound but usually in ultrasound we use the frequency of more than 1 or 2 megahertz so those are the beams which pass through the body and can enter into any tissue and after once they are received back to the transducer they form the images so it is the ultrasound pulses which are produced by the scanner and are described here of the frequency between 2 to 10 megahertz so as you can see in this image so there is some uh, there is a fish inside the water and there is a scanner so, so imagine that this is the transducer and it is emitting the ultrasound waves so the first wave which is going and getting reflected back to the uh, transducer is formed in the earlier part so from that we can see whether this image is nearer to the probe or or more distal to the probe so hence this is the way in which the ultrasound waves are transmitted from the transducer and gets reflected back and which is again picked up by the transducer and whatever structures are coming in between are the images which is formed on your screen so these are the two main components one is the transducer and one is the your main machine which you are using so it has been wonderfully wonderfully described by dr kamal arora sir uh, in which he had shown you how to use the machine how to turn it on and what are the presets what you use on the machine so now for previously you had uh, learned that for doing an echocardiography you need a sectoral probe through which you can uh, see because you have a very small area window from which you will be able to see the structures that is the heart so it is a very narrow foot uh, footprint that is the sectoral probe which you are using and the higher frequency probes you are using so if for doing head ultrasound also what is the frequency is 5 to 10 is the ideal frequency so you can have a single probe in which you can have multiple frequencies also and the most ideal in most circumstances 7.5 megahertz is the ideal frequency through which you can see the head ultrasound if the baby is very small as you had learned that the higher the frequency the resolution is better and more superficial structures can be seen in a better way and for a lower frequency more deeper structures are used so in a full term baby or babies with thick hair you can use a 5 megahertz probe so in the same of probe you can set the frequency so for the smaller baby and the more superficial structure you will need require a higher frequency and for the bigger babies and those with having thick hair or the more deeper structures you want to see then you will you need a lower frequency probe so these are the commonest types of probes that is one is the sectoral probe which you have you are using for the echocardiography so ideally what is having more, because these probes are very costly most of the people are using you are buying only single probe so sectoral probe is the probe which most of the people are using so same, same probe can be used because it is having a narrow footprint so from the uh, window that is the commonest is the ntf front tunnel from which we are seeing so it fits easily over the ntf front tunnel so for if you want to see the more superficial structures and you can use a linear probe the radiologist usually use a curvy linear probe but we as an nicu unit we don't buy routinely multiple probes one or two are the most uh, commonest probes which we are using this is the radial probe <coughs> so can anyone uh, answer, uh, answer in the chat box which kind of probe is uh, this is used so it is uh, basically used in the 
transvaginal probe which most of the people are using and if you are in a uh, suppose you are working in a gynec hospital you can even use this probe because it again gives, gives very good images for the cranial ultrasound so if you are uh, using in a uh, working in a unit <clears throat> so uh, you can use this kind of probes also So, again, what is an important part of the probe is the marker on which side you keep the marker is very important. In the echocardiography, you have learned that there is a clock and you have to decide with whether it is at 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock position, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock position. In the head ultrasound, it is very simple. You usually keep it either on the right side of the baby or you keep it anteriorly. These are the two commonest positions we will later on see also. So this is the marker. There are various type of marker. It can be a ridge also. There can be a light also. So different probes have different type of uh, marker. So you'll have to identify the marker and usually you start it with keeping it on the right side of the baby. So there are, there are various positions in which you move the probe, which again has been discussed. So the commonest positions are the tilt. So it is being described how you move the tail end of the baby. So again, for that, when you keep the probe on the baby, when you see this is the tail end, see this is the footprint and suppose see this is the baby and if you move the tail end front or back side, it is called as tilting. If you move it sideways, it is called as angulation and you can completely rotate it also or you can move the whole probe also. So these are the commonest movement when you which you move. So, how do we describe it? We describe it from the tail end, that is the distal end of the uh, probe. So, these are the tilting angulations. So, that means that you are moving this either in front or backwards. It is called tilting. If you move it sideways, it is called angulation. If you completely rotate it, it is called as rotation. So, how do you hold the probe? You put the marker on the right side of the head or or anteriorly and you will have to secure your hand also properly so how do you secure your hand you will hold the probe like a pen with two fingers your index finger and the thumb and the three fingers rest on the head but be very careful because you should not be putting your fingers over the eyes or you should not be applying too much of pressure the baby might get irritated and if the baby is irritated there can be desaturations also then if that is there happening then you will have to stop and again, give you at a later point. And if you keep on practicing, it is if you can do it very gently on the baby also, and the baby will not get very irritated. And once you select your probe, you know how to keep it. So you will need to select a preset with Dr. Kamal Arora had wonderfully described. So there is an when you start the machine, there is an uh, area. Different machines will have different uh, way this thing. So, in that you will have to select a preset like for echocardiography, you select a pediatric or a neonatal echocardiography and for neonatal brain, you will select a neonatal brain ultrasound. If you are not able to find it, you will have to ask your machine person that you, he will have to set it so that the defined frequency, the marker, the depth, all those things, the brightness, the gain, all these things are set by the company person and if you are initially not able to decide what is the better image for you when you are buying a new machine you can take help of your radiologist also you can call him to your unit and ask him to guide the this uh, machine person or usually the machine uh, eco machine uh, the ultrasound person is or the application specialist is well aware how to set this so now once the machine is ready we need to know in which babies we need to do an head ultrasound. So usually it is done in the premature babies as a screening measure for the intraventricular hemorrhage. So as a routine, I will tell you after a few slides about in how do we set the protocol. In any sick baby, you have to do an head ultrasound to rule out whether the baby is having IV, hydrocephalus or any other issues. If there is a sudden, sorry, a sudden fall in hemoglobin, the it can be due to uh, intraventricular hemorrhage also. So you have to rule out intraventricular hemorrhage in these babies. If the baby is having a large size head or if the head size is increasing rapidly, then again there are chances of hydrocephalus. You need to rule out any anomalies like microcephalus. You can identify. So it is 
not that easy in head ultrasound but still you can rule out some of the major congenital malformations if you are suspecting any ventri meningitis ventriculitis if you are suspecting intraventricular hemorrhage you need to do a serial follow up for the babies for post hemorrhagic hydrocephalus any baby who has thrown a scissor you can do a head ultrasound to find out the cause in babies of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy you need to do an uh, you do head ultrasound you see for the ri which we'll be talking about later we will see about whether there is any traumatic or difficult delivery seek infant irrespective of gestational age a large boggy swelling in the scalp if the baby is having anemia and if there are sometimes some anomalies like uh, av malformations there can be a sudden congestive cardiac failure so i had a baby in which there was severe pphn and baby was in failure and when i put the probe on the head there was a large vein of gallen malformation that is an av malformation so we were able to find out what was the cause of that pphn in the baby so there can be sudden surprises also sometimes in the brain so which should baby should be screened routinely all the babies who are below 32 weeks or below 1500 grams need to be screened if the baby is above 32 weeks or the baby's weight is above 1500 grams then if the baby had any risk factors like asphyxia tension pneumothorax or is having any abnormal neurological signs all the ventilated babies and all the sick babies need to do go through an head ultrasound so when to do it in a premature baby as a routine screening protocol so any baby who is less than 28 weeks or below 1 kg or any baby who is between 28 weeks to 32 weeks but or less than 1500 grams is on life support then you need to do it at 6 hours of age to rule out whether there was any antenatal intraventricular hemorrhage was there or not for you can see for the anomalies also but basically that will be helpful for you for a medical legal purpose that the baby already had an antenatal intraventricular hemorrhage as a routine between day 3 to 1 week of age as a routine we see whether the whether the baby is having ivf because usually within 1 to 2 week of the age most of the intraventricular hemorrhages have been detected can do it at 4 weeks to see whether there are any uh, pvl changes are there or not and again you should do it repeat it at term equivalent age or at discharge so any baby who is between 28 to 32 weeks or between 1 to 1.5 kg without life support you have to do it between 3 days to 1 week at 4 weeks and at discharge or term equivalent age and if the baby is above 32 to 34 weeks then if the baby was monochorionic twin head and head circumference of less than 3rd centile baby was ventilated where there was fetal distress severe acidosis abgar were less than 5 uh, less than 6 at 5 minutes or baby had severe hypotension on those babies you need to do an ecg ultrasound as a screening protocol between 5 days to 1 week of age so now we will see so these are the indications in which babies when to do it and how to do how, how do we see the machine how do we turn it on how do we show what is the preset that part has been already covered in the initial uh, lecture and the basics of the ultrasound has also been covered but we today will be talking specially about the head ultrasound what are the views how do we put the probe where do we put the probe and what all are the structures that we see in the brain so we need an window as in the echocardiography we used to select a space which is in between the two ribs similarly because the bone is a very bad conductor of the uh, transmitter of the ultrasound wave so if you keep it over any part of the skull you will not be able to see any structure which is below it because all the waves which are which are uh, passing to the uh, bone will get reflected back immediately and will not get transmitted after the bone structure hence we need some of the windows or the areas through which we will get an sonic window so we can see the brain structure very easily so commonest frontanel which we which we all know and we monitor also is the anterior frontanel so you need to keep the first you have to palpate with your hand that where is the anterior frontanel and then you will have to keep your probe over that so other sonic windows which we will be talk, talking about in very brief because they are not as a routine being done is the posterior frontanel which is situated over here so you will have to palpate it and keep your probe over here so commonest site or the uh, marker should be in which position for this baby suppose you want to do an anterior frontanel scan 
so everybody can write in the chat box so it is located on the right side marker should be on the right side or either anteriorly that means the marker should be positioning on this or the uh, side of the baby okay then there is an another window is there yes dr ashadur has written on right or anterior that's correct so we can keep it behind the ear that is the mastoid front tunnel or the sphenoid front tunnel so these are the two other front tunnels through which we can get a, a view of the brain we'll be talking about them later on so basically what we are seeing brain is basically a three dimensional structure but we are seeing in a two dimensional structure so anterior front tunnel is the standard acoustic window so if we see usually as a routine what we do is we see through the anterior front tunnel only so, so what we'll be doing here is we'll be seeing all the brain so we, i will show you 3d images also in which it will be like slicing open the brain brain and we will see what all structures we can see inside the brain so basically we are seeing a 3d structure but in a 2d plane so how do we scan now we'll start with the anterior front tunnel so how do we scan it we keep it in the anterior front tunnel then we see from the front to the occipital so there are two basic views that is the coronal view and the sagittal view these are the two commonest views uh, uh, orientation in which we keep the probe so first is the commonest we do is the coronal view then after that we'll turn the probe in the sagittal plane and then we'll see so in a coronal plane we move the probe or we tilt the probe from anterior to the posterior okay and when we do in a sagittal plane we will rotate uh, uh, angulate the plane from the right to left so how many planes you can randomly move your probe but you have should have a protocol a standard views are there like in echocardiography you have an apical view you have a parasternal short axis long axis pda view <coughs> ductal view these are the standard views in which you see for the heart similarly in a brain you will have a six coronal and five sagittal views in which you should document and whenever you are having any abnormality is detected you should record them at least in two planes like in a <clears throat> coronal plane and the sagittal plane also so again six coronal and five standard parasagittal views for the anterior front tunnel so <clears throat> if whenever you keep your probe on the anterior front tunnel or a, any plane either it is coronal or sagittal the usually what you see is even if you have measured it it is very perfect still you will get some amount of asymmetry hence you will need to angulate your probe a little bit to get a more symmetrical image so there is it is a very common finding next as i discussed previous previously these are the probe markers so where do you keep your probe mic marker so when you are doing a coronal view it is in the right side and when you are doing any sagittal view it is placed anteriorly and there is a marker on the screen also which is it should be always on the left side so this is the marker we have kept it on the right side of the baby so exactly on the right side so if you put a clock on the head it should be on the 3 o'clock position or say 9 o'clock position and again the marker should be always on the left side hence you can you are able to mention see that this is the probe marker this is the marker on the screen so whatever lesions are present on this side or whatever structure is present on this side is the right side of the baby's brain and whatever structures are present on the left side that is on the opposite side of the marker that those are the lesions present on the left side so one side kept the probe you, you can see that there is some amount of asymmetry which i am getting on the ventricles so whenever you keep your probe you will get some amount of ventricular asymmetry hence you need to angulate it a little bit to get a more clearer image so what are the coronal views there are six standard coronal views that is one is the uh, this is the cut section so we will see one by one each view that where from where it is passing so one will pass from in front of the ventricle second just when the ventricle start 
third in from the foramen of Monroe, fourth it will start from the posterior part of the or the middle part of the ventricle, fifth is from the posterior part of the ventricle, and sixth view which will pass from the uh, occipital uh, cortex. Okay, so these are the standard coronal views. So how do we move the probe? This is the tilting of the probe. We tilt it from anterior to posterior, and then we will see where, where the, what is the structure of the brain. So we have kept the probe on the anterior front tunnel, and then we will be sweeping it from anterior to the posterior, and we will be able to see all the views what we had discussed, the six standard coronal views. So this is how it is placed on the anterior front tunnel, and this is how your probe should be moved. This is the anterior, then we are going gradually to the posterior. Again, in, this is anterior, gradually we, this beam is going posteriorly. So we'll be cutting the structure of the brain like this, like this, like this, like this. So as you can see, this is the brain structure externally. So we'll be cutting the brain like this. So from front, it will go from posterior again, more, more and more posterior. So this is the first view in which the or beam, ultrasound beam will pass through all these structures. So what is this structure? It is the frontal horn or frontal lobe of the cerebral cortex. So this, this two, these two parts are the, the it, this is which side? The marker is on the, as a standard, we keep it on the right side. On the screen, it is on left side, but on the babies, it is on right side. Hence, this is the right side of the brain and this is the left side of the brain. Now, can anyone tell what is this prominent structure? Anyone can type in the chat box. Yes, it is the interhemispheric fissure and the fax cerebri goes inside this. So again, right side, left side. This is the interhemispheric fissure. This is the frontal lobe and this is the orbital ridge. So below that is the orbit. That is the, both the eyes are there. Okay, so above that, so this is the anterior most view. So again, we are not showing, seeing any of the ventricles. So in the anterior most and posterior most views, not be able to see any ventricle. So this beam is passing from the frontal lobe. Okay. Why is it important? You need to, so if you see scan for the whole of the brain, you will not miss any of the structures. Hence, you need to screen it from front to back. So it has to be your standard map, standard way in which you should be doing it. Okay. So again, if you are seeing, sometimes you will see the PVL changes in frontal lobe also. So then we second is we are passing the beam from the second part. So what are these structures? So these are the structures which we will see. So how it how the this beam has passed through the brain, and we will be able to see this all structures when we pass the beam through. We go more posteriorly. So in this, the major structures are. Again, what is this structure we had seen previously? It is the interhemispheric fissure. Then what we see is we see two parallel lines over here. Those are called the corpus callosum. Okay, yes. So this is the frontal horn view. Okay. So these two parallel like a railway track. So tram track is it is there. So two parallel lines are going just above the frontal horn of the ventricles. These are the corpus callosum. So you can identify if they, these two parallel lines are not seen easily. You, you can identify that this child might be having a corpus callosal agenesis. So this is the area where you can see the two parallel lines. That is the corpus callosum. Then these two structures are the frontal horn of the lateral ventricle. So lateral ventricle have multiple horns. So it, this part is the frontal horn of the lateral ventricle. Again, there is some structure which is again appearing back. So this in this structure, there is the cerebrospinal fluid is there. As this is a, appearing hypoechoic or black. And the, this all is the brain structures. Okay. So this is the cavum septum pellucidum. So this is the area in between the two lateral ventricles. It is called as the cavum septum pellucidum. Then you can see. What you can see here is the caudate nucleus. Below that is your putamen. So these are all the structures what you can see in the 
frontal horn view as well as you can see the frontal lobes then there is a y shape at this is the y shape at this in the 3d view you can see it easily this is the y shape at image so it is called as the sylvian fission so it is a fissure between the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe and in posteriorly when we go it is between the parietal and the temporal lobe also so this is the sign so whenever you try to get any image you should try to make sure that you see this image is with both the sylvian fissure appearing similarly so that is a more symmetrical image because sometimes the ventricle are asymmetric also but there can be some lesions so hence you are getting a proper central image or not you can decide it based on your sylvian fissure both the sylvian fissure should be appearing similarly in the y shape format and below down is your temporal horn so it is this area above is on the frontal side is the frontal horn below it is your temporal temporal lobe okay so this view is called as the frontal horn view in which you can see the frontal horn still see here you do not see any bright choroid plexus structure okay so now after that when we move the horn till the probe more posteriorly we pass through it to the foramen of monroe what is it it is in structure which connects it is the passage through which the lateral horns connect to the lateral ventricles connect to the third ventricle so it is called as the foramen of monroe okay so this view is for the foramen of monroe how do we see again a cut section in which so it is a 2d as we move through more posteriorly previously we'll be able to see only two horns and no third ventricle was not easily visible here we can see that this is the uh, frontal horn and this is the foramen of monroe and below is the third ventricle okay and this is a very important view because here we see for the measure all the ventricular indices which dr vishal will be discussing that at the point where we see the third foramen of monroe is seen at that point we measure the ventricular sizes in case of babies with hydrocephalus so what are the structures here we identify it is the lateral ventricles these are the lateral ventricles here also see. so you, this is called as also the threshold view so you can see in the threshold like there are three these things and this is a small center part okay so this is also called as the threshold view or the frontal uh, uh, coronal view through the foramen of monroe so what is foramen of monroe this is the black structure which is connecting the lateral ventricles to the third ventricle is called as the foramen of monroe please try to remember because at the end if time permits we will uh, i'll be asking you what all views it is there and what all structures you are able to identify then below that is the again the black part that is the hypoechoic part is the third ventricle again the csf it is csf field hence you see a black structure over here okay other structures what you see over here is the caudate nucleus it is just lateral to the lateral ventricle then in between what we had seen a triangular or v-shaped lateral v-shaped area is the internal capsule so all the fibers from the frontal uh, cerebral cortex get converged here and then again it goes down so this is the very important structure is it the internal capsule but it is a bit difficult to identify over here then we see the putamen and the globus pallidus okay so putamen is more lateral global pallidus is more central medially placed so these are all the structures so you can see in the babies with severe hypocase ischemic encephalopathies this is the area in which all the meconium aspiration or sorry the um, uh, connectors babies you see these structures but you need a a great expertise to identify whether the echoic changes are more different than other babies. Now, as we move our probe more posteriorly, as you can see over here, we have moved it more posteriorly. So now what the twist I have structures here, we see the middle part of the middle ventricle. So this is the part from where the choroid plexus starts. So again, what is this structure? Can anyone write in the chat box? What is this linear structure above the ventricles? Bright structure. Yes, interhemispheric fissure. Very good. These, what are these structures? This is the lateral ventricles. Okay. Now you can see that there is still there is some third ventricle you will be able to delineate here. 
but you can see the some bright dots also appearing over here so this what is this structure this is the choroid plexus so here what you see is you see two bright dots over here so sometimes you might mistake this for the intraventricular hemorrhage also so again what what i mentioned if you suspect that there is any uh, abnormality is there you should always see it on the uh, two planes that is here you are confused whether it is actually an IVH or not but then you will have to delineate it in the second view also how do you do it will dr vishal will be talking about the intraventricular hemorrhage and below that is our third ventricle and lower down what you see is is your cerebellum this is the tentorium cerebral see here what i was talking about is the sylvian fissure you can see that both the sylvian fissures are identical these are the y shaped structures so to get an identical image your interventricular fissures would be interhemispheric fissures would be in the center your ventricles should appear symmetrical and your Sylvian fissure should be appearing y shaped so once you start getting a proper images in the baby then you will gradually start from doing from normal babies identify first the normal structures do 10 20 25 normal babies and then gradually shift to the more and more abnormal babies then you will be able to identify what is normal and what is abnormal then as we move the probe more posteriorly that is when sorry when we move the probe more posteriorly it is passing through the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle so what we had seen is initially the frontal horn the middle part and now we are going through the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle so here what it is cutting what the black structure what you can see is the choroid plexus over here so it is cutting the choroid plexus so now what we see is in choroid plexus is not shown here but what we can see still the lateral ventricles are present and we will see the more posterior part so these are the lateral ventricles this bright structure is the choroid plexus so how do you identify the choroid plexus whether it is normal or bleed is there so is there any hyperechoic areas are there the wall of it is whether smooth or not or whether it is separate to any blood you can see hyperechoic areas which are separated from the ventricles or not so from that you cannot make out whether it is a normal or abnormal so this is also called as the trigonal view okay so again these are the choroid plexus below is the cerebellum so these are the structures again in these structures what we are seeing is the ventricle what we can make out here is or whether there is interventric hemispheric fissure is moved to either side that is any midline shift is there what we can see is we can see for the cerebral cortex whether it, there is any periventricular leukomalacia like cystic changes are there or not or whether there is a grade 4 IVH in which there is an intraparenchymal bleed there is or not or whether there are any infect areas or not so similarly we have, we have to see for the ventricular system as well as the cortex also whether there are any abnormalities there or not now what we can see is so this was the fifth view again when we move more posteriorly we see in cerebral cortex only that is the sixth view now from the coronal view we will be moving our probe from the marker which was on the right side of the baby to the anterior side okay so if we see for this skull it is at the 12 o'clock position okay so we will move the probe so this is here the marker is placed towards the nose of the baby okay so here the marker is placed in the front here there is a marker there is a ridge is there as well as a light is there and from this again what you can see is here it is placed anteriorly the ridge you can see it is placed anteriorly okay so ridge is placed here so it is anteriorly so this is how you keep it the probe should be perpendicular to the surface of the head first you will have to palpate where the where there is the anterior front panel then you keep your probe with the marker placing towards the nose of the baby okay again what you can see is holding like a pen and these two fingers are resting over the head but we should not apply too much of the pressure so what are the views in the sagittal so total five views one is the central most view which we are cutting open the brain in the center line then two lateral views one is passing through the ventricles and the third one is more laterally toward through the cortex of the brain similar this is on one side or left side of the baby and similarly you have to see for the fourth and fifth view 
or that is on the uh, right side of the baby. As a convention, we start from the right side and then we move to the left side for the baby. So how do we see it? So we rotate here. You can see that we have rotated with the marker anteriorly. Okay. So when we cut open the brain, these are the structures which we see. We'll just be seeing it one after the another, each of the structures. So this is these are all the structures we will be seeing. So we have to keep it on the center. So how do you identify whether actually the this is in the center or not? So this is the true sagittal plane, or what we identify is the lady in dress view. So here this is the head part, head and shoulder. This is the body and this is the gown. So like these are the structures you can mark it out like lady in dress view so this view is called true sagittal or midline view or lady in dress view okay so now what are the structures which will i identify so in first view at second view i told you there are two parallel lines above the ventricle so here you can easily see that there are two parallel line going so this is the corpus callosum which is the connection between the both the sides of the brain so sometimes there can be corpus callosal energies partial also so you'll be able to see these bright lines anteriorly not posteriorly but if it is complete then that means there is no corpus callosal agenesis okay so this is the first the first structure which we see is the corpus callosum again above that is our cerebral cortex so this is the frontal lobe parietal lobe posterior with the occipital lobe so these are the structures of the brain. Then below that, what you see here is empty is on the center most part that is on the between the two lateral ventricles. This empty space is called as the cavum septum pellucidum. So sometimes this cannot be seen easily. So here in more the premature babies, the it is cavum septum is open area. Hence, we will be able to see it. Then below that is the connection between the lateral ventricles and the third ventricle, which is called as the foramen of Monroe. Excuse me, can somebody mute the person who is talking? Panelist of Focus Workshop, can please mute yourself? Sorry, if you are getting. Excuse me. Yes. दो नहीं देना आपको ही भी नहीं देना है आधा है नहीं तो पांच सौ वाला एक दे सकते हैं कल पोस्ट पे और कोई आप कुछ नहीं क्या कि इसमें डेंगू का सर्च है इसमें बात तो नाउ बिलो दैट इज आर टेरिबेलम ओके तो दिस आर दी स्ट्रक्चर्स व्हाट वी सी Again, we can see below the foramen of Monroe is our third ventricle. Below that is our fourth ventricle. It is connected through the aqueduct of Sylvius. And in front of the fourth ventricle, we will be able to see this. So this is the aqueduct of Sylvius. This is our third ventricle, foramen of Monroe. And about in front of that is our brainstem. Okay. So now when we move our probe more laterally, what we see is we have to tilt our probe towards the left. We have to angulate our probe towards the left and or right hand side either way. But you have to record it on both these sides. So as a as a norm, we started from the right hand side. So what is happening now? We cut open. So this beam, what is going is going through this part, and what we can see is these are the structures which we are able to identify. Okay. So what are the structures we see here? So this is the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. And this is the ventricular system. So it is going from, this is the frontal horn, the middle ventricle, the occipital horn, the, and the inferior horn. So what we can see is, we can see the central part, central structures also, that is the caudate nucleus. 
This is a very important structure. That is the cordothalamic notch. Why is it important? So because choroid plexus anteriorly starts from the cordothalamic groove, up be a posterior to that. So if there is any intraventricular hemorrhage is there, so if you see any bright hyperechoic structure inside the cordothalamic groove or anterior to that, then you will be able to see that the, the baby is having an intraventricular hemorrhage. So this is a very important structure. So this is basically your thalamus and this is the caudate nucleus. Okay, so here you can see this three shaped structure is caudate nucleus and this is your thalamus. So this is the notch or the area slight dipping is there. It is called as the cordothalamic notch. So you'll call uh, thalamus and the, this hyperechoic or a bright structure which we see from starting just posterior to the cordothalamic notch is the choroid plexus which is going inferiorly also. Okay, so this is the choroid plexus and below is the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. Okay, so again we'll move more laterally that is through the cortex of the brain. So once we have angulated the probe, more laterally, these are the structures we will identify. So why this view is important to see for any uh, lesions in the brain like pen periventricular leukomalacia which is happening lateral to the ventricles. Okay. So in the lateral most view, what we see is the frontal lobe, then the parietal lobe, then the occipital lobe, this horizontal line which is the Y-shaped line which you are seeing on the coronal view is the sylvian fissure and below that is our temporal lobe, okay. So, these are the structures which we see when we move our probe more laterally, okay. So, we have to document in five views. One is the central mode that is the lady interest sign. Lateral to that we see the ventricular system in which we see for the choroid plexus also. And whether we try to identify what are the structures that are there, and as well as we see for the uh, uh, measure the vent, uh, for in the posterior horn also for the ventricular dilatation, and still more laterally we see for whether there are any lesions in the cerebral cortex, and see for the periventricular leukemia. So all the areas of the brain needs to be scanned in all the babies. Okay, so now some of the less commonly used. Uh, uh, the views are there, which are the posterior views or the ex axial views are there in which we start with the posterior front tunnel. So, how, what do we do is we move the probe posteriorly. This was the anterior front tunnel. From that, we have moved our probe to the posterior front tunnel. Again, here the marker is on the right hand side of the baby. Okay. See here the probe. What, what actually is happening is on the brain and this part of the area is what we will be we will be seeing. So when it cut opens, so these are the structures which we will be seeing. So this part is seen on the screen on uh, above because it is more nearer to the probe and these are the distal most part. Okay, so this would be where we are keeping our probe on the posterior side. So this will be our occipital horn and this will be our frontal horn areas. Okay, so what we are seeing here is again the interhemispheric fissure. Then we are seeing our occipital lobe. Then this is our lateral ventricle and below is our third ventricle. So sometimes what is, is we can identify whether there is an uh, uh, intraventricular hemorrhage which is extending more posteriorly because the baby is usually sleeping and the dependent most part is the posterior part. So sometimes the blood trickles on the posterior side of the brain. So here it is easier for you to see for the posterior uh, hemorrhages or sometimes when the blood trickles on the back side. Okay. Second view is our mastoid view. Here we move the probe from the posterior front tunnel to the behind the ear. Okay. But here we have rotated. You can see that we are now we have rotated and the red marker is pointing anteriorly. Okay. Okay, so here we can see this is the marker, it is facing anteriorly and we are keeping our probe just behind and usually these views are a bit difficult to get, hence you will need to move your probe a little bit to get a very good window. So this is how you keep your probe and your marker should be pointing anteriorly. Okay, so again your probe is being moved and this is the area over which you will keep keeping your probe. So what are the structures you will be seeing is, so posterior, post, posterior most part is your cerebellum. Hence, you will be able to see for whether there are any cerebellar lesions are there, cerebellar hypogenesis or agenesis is there. 
okay uh, so cerebellar hemispheres are there both right and left side hemispheres are there then cerebral vermis that is the central part in front of the cerebellum is our fourth ventricle so you can if there is an non-obstructive hydrocephalus you will see that the fourth ventricular system is also dilated and in front of the fourth ventricle is your brain stem so this is the fourth ventricle and in front of that is your brain stem so these are the structures which you can identify behind that again you sometimes see these this bright uh, hyper hypoechoic areas that is the system amide. okay <clears throat> so these are the commonest views which we see so we see from for the anterior uh, posterior front tunnel then we see for the uh, mastoid view and we also see for the sphenoid view also that is in front of the ear we keep the probe and we see for the uh, ventricular system in which we can be able to identify the lateral ventricles and the third ventricle also now one more thing which we need to see is for the cerebral artery doppler so the two commonest arteries which we see is the anterior cerebral artery and second is our middle cerebral artery okay so for the anterior cerebral artery what we where do we keep so can anyone write in the chat box which is this front tunnel over which we have kept the probe and what is the position of the uh, or what is the view which will we get we get on this view so we have the marker just for a hint this marker is facing towards the nose so what kind of view will we get the marker is facing anteriorly yes so it is the anterior front tunnel and we get a sagittal view based on this okay so here we have rotated the probe anteriorly okay and the marker is facing towards the nose okay so what kind of view it our beams will cut it on the sagittal plane hence it is called as the sagittal view okay and what are the structures what we see is literally we see this is the corpus uh, cavum septum the corpus callosum is there sorry corpus callosum is done this is the cavum septum and we see the ventricular system over here and this is the anterior cerebral artery which rotates over the frontal part or the genu of the corpus callosum so it, it originates and goes upwards from the internal carotid artery it goes upwards and rotates over the genu and again goes posteriorly over the corpus that is the base of your inter hemispheric fissure and then it gives off branches to the brain so we can measure the ri that is the resistive index in this anterior cerebral artery okay so how does it look and how do we do it so what we do is we first identify the we keep it in the true sagittal plane we might need to angulate it a bit so here you can see the lady in dress sign is not clearly visible so i need i should angulate it at a bit then I, I put a color flow over here so this window is there and we have to keep it on the lower lower frequencies because this is a very slow, low flow uh, blood flow system is there and what kind of uh, uh, Doppler will you use whether you will use a pulse wave Doppler or a color wave Doppler so hence this the velocity of the blood in the brain is not that high so it is a very low velocity blood flow in the brain so what kind of Doppler will you use will you use pulse wave Doppler or will you use color flow do uh, so continuous uh, wave Doppler yes very good it is a pulse wave Doppler so you will put your window over here and your your angle of insonation should not be more than 15 degrees so your probe per line should be passing exactly through this so your angle of insonation should be taken care of otherwise you will not get a proper reading in this patient so this is how you will be able to see the flow so it will be a pulsatile flow and this is this is the anterior cerebral artery so hence there is an angulation over here so we'll have to minimize the angle of insonation so how do we measure it first you need to put a color flow then you will have to identify the anterior cerebral artery you will have to put your pulse wave doppler over this anterior cerebral artery and you have to put your gate so that the angle of insonation is not that high okay and then you will have to press your pulse wave doppler so what are so this is again a live image in which you see the corpus callosum in front of that you will be able to see the anterior cerebral artery you put your gate see you will be able to see the gate 
and then you will see this wave pattern over here. So what what is this systolic and diastolic? So how do you measure the RI? Now now in the modern machines it is getting auto calculated. So what you will have to do is when you press the measure button, you will you will have to select the RI mode in which you have to take the two readings over here. That is the peak systolic. That is the highest point over here and the lowest point. You do not touch it over the baseline, but wherever your this waveform ends and just before your waveform next waveform starts at that point you will have to keep it so here you can see that this peak systolic velocity is 29 and diastolic velocity is 10 and so the ri is auto calculated as 0.65 which is normal so it is 0.55 to 0.8 so any value above or below that is abnormal okay so when there is an raised intraventricular pressure, you will get a higher RI. In case of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, you will get a lower RI. So it, it helps to prognosticate it. So once one, one artery what which we have seen is the middle cerebral artery in the uh, sorry, anterior cerebral artery in the coronal view. Sorry, sorry, mid sagittal view. And second is our Axial view in which we see for the anterior part that is the coronal axial view. So we keep the probe over here. So it is in front of the ear. Okay. Then what we see the probe is moving in front. Okay. When we cut open the brain, we see the, this is the middle cerebral artery what we, we are seeing. Okay. So this is the pulsatile flow which we get in the middle cerebral artery. Okay. So here the advantage is it is more in line with the beam of the pulse wave Doppler. So you get a better image. Hence, middle cerebral artery flow is also being seen in these babies. Okay. Again, what you do is you try to identify the pulsatile structure over here. So here, as this blood is going towards the probe, it is red in color. Then you put your gate over here and then you press the PW button. Then you will get this waveform pattern. Okay. What are the <coughs> abnormalities? You get a RI, it is increased as I told you in the P in the raised intracranial pressure, like cerebral edema, intracranial bleed, periventricular leukomalacia, hydrocephalus. Okay. Many other conditions are also there. And in some of the condition, it gets decreased, like in asphyxia babies, you get a decreased RI. Okay. So these are the sources through which I had taken all the material. So if the time permits, then uh, I can ask few questions. Uh, otherwise, we can wind up uh, whatever is permitted by the Dr. Mohit. So now you can ask. Yes, yes, yes. You can. You do have five ten minutes. Okay, sir. <coughs> so somebody uh, is asking, can you show MCA Doppler once? Okay. Yes. So what we can, what we are doing is we are seeing the splenoid view over here. What I had initially shown that there are, there is, this is the anterior front tunnel, posterior is the posterior front tunnel. Behind the ear, what we are keeping is the mastoid uh, front tunnel and just in front is the splenoid front tunnel. Okay, here we could again keep the probe marker anteriorly over the splenoid front tunnel again we'll have to navigate it is not that easy always so we'll have to keep the probe in the sphenoid uh, front tunnel and we have to keep the marker anteriorly when we keep it like this so front uh, marker facing in front it is just in front of your ears the cut open section is there so what we see is we here this view is again used for the in the intraventricular hemorrhage babies or the hydrocephalus babies to measure for the third ventricle. Okay. Uh, third ventricular size also. We can see the fourth ventricular and third ventricular also in this view. And as this, the angle of insonation is minimal in this view, we can see the right ventricular, uh, sorry, middle cerebral artery over here. Once we keep our probe, that this is the middle cerebral artery which we see. Once we keep our uh, the arterial flow is easily visible. You can keep the minimal angle of insulation and you can place your gate over here. So what you see is see here you can see the middle cerebral artery. You can see for the circle of Willis also over here. So these are the structures which are seen. 
Okay, so this is the middle cerebral artery. You keep your pulse wave gate over first, you see for the color. Uh, then you put your pulse, identify the middle cerebral artery, minimize the angle of insonation. You put your pulse wave gate over here and then you will have to start with the uh, pulse wave. And that this is the pattern what you see. Again, as I had shown you previously that you see for the peak systolic and the end diastolic over here. And based on this, you will have to measure the RI in the baby. Okay. Okay. So now it is my time. My, so if anybody wants to ask any question, he can do it. Or uh, if you don't ask, I will ask. Okay. So let's start. What is this structure? Since we have five more minutes, I think if everybody please try to uh, do it a bit first. Yes, it is the interhemispheric fissure. Okay. Then we see the frontal horn in the intraorbital. Okay. So this is a quick revision. So here our beam is passing anteriorly. So which is this view, whether it is coronal view, axial view, uh, sagittal view, which kind of view it is. Coronal sagittal. Yes, it is a sagittal view with the beam passing Sorry, it is a coronal view, okay, not sagittal view. It is a coronal view with the beam passing anteriorly, okay? Yes, Dr. Deshish, uh, Dr. Punya, uh, all have answered correctly, yes. Okay, so now this is the second view. Now, what is the name of the view? This is the view, it is showing structures. So, whether it is the frontal most, we see are seeing the frontal lobe, whether we are seeing the frontal horn, whether we are seeing the foramen of Monroe, whether we are seeing the more posterior choroid trigonal view, which is the Dr. Ashraf Duras telling about trishul view. No, this is not the trishul view. This is the frontal horn view because here we are not able to identify the foramen of Monroe. Okay. So this is not the trishul view over here. Okay. It will be more posteriorly. So now what is uh, this structure? Yes, it is the lateral ventricles. Okay. Then what is this structure? Here, what you can see, what is this hypoechoic area? Yes, system, cavum septum, pellucidum. Yes. Okay. Now, this is the trishul view. Here, you can see one, the lateral ventricles on both the side, as well as you are seeing the third. This is the cavum septum, pellucidum. So, more like a three, three pronged view. Okay. So here you can see easily make out the connection between the lateral and the third ventricle. Okay. So what is this structure? What is this connecting between the lateral ventricle and the third ventricle? Yes, for on and off, Monroe. Very good. And what is this structure below the central part? Yes, Dr. Naudib, Dr. Shardur have mentioned. Yes, Dr. Sir, it is the third ventricle. Very good. Okay. <clears throat> now, what what is this view? Where our beam is passing through? It is our fourth view, which is through the no. It is yes. It is a coronal view, but what what all structures with what we are seeing and which is it is passing through frontal on the middle part or the more uh, posteriorly or it is the occipital lobe what we are seeing is so first two we had already seen from the frontal lobe then the frontal on then the trishul view now this is passing to the middle of the ventricle okay so here anteriorly we are not seeing this two bright structure can anybody say what are these two bright structures what we are seeing is Yes, it is the choroid plexus. Very good. So, these are the lateral ventricles. This is the choroid plexus. So, we are up just posterior to the chordothalamic notch, what we are seeing in the sagittal view. Okay. So, here from here, our choroid plexus starts. What is this structure? What is this structure? What we are seeing is here you can make it identified more easily. 
so these are the lateral ventricles and this is the third ventricle very good this is this is our cerebellum okay now what is this view called trigonal view very good so what is this structure Yes, this is the right structure, hyperechoic structure, which is called as the coral plexus. Okay, very good. Now, what, what is this view? Previously, what all images we had seen were from the coronal plane. Okay, now we will identify this is the midline sagittal view. Very good. And the sign which we see is the lady in dress. Very good, of course, observe. So, we are seeing a lady in dress appearance. So, this is the true sagittal or a midline view. Yes, Dr. Panda has also mentioned it correctly. So, now what are the structures? So, these two parallel lines which are going from anteriorly and turning backwards. What, what is this structure? Yes, it is the corpus callosum. Then, what we are seeing here is the Kevam septum pellucinum. Then this structure is the connection between the lateral ventricle and the third ventricle is the foramen of Monroe. Yes. No groove we'll be seeing on the podothalamic groove we'll be seeing on the more lateral view. But this is the connection between the lateral and the third ventricle. Okay. So this is called as the foramen of Monroe. Then sorry. Yeah. So, what is this? This is the hypoechoic area. Okay, so what is this structure? It is a part of the ventricle. Okay, yes, very good. So, it is the fourth ventricle and the structure which is in front of it is our, what is this structure? Yes, it is the brainstem. Now, what... Somebody has mentioned the groove, Dr. Naudip, it is this structure, it, this is the caudate nucleus, this is the thalamus, so the groove, the dipping, slight dipping what we see over here is the caudothalamic groove, here is the caudate nucleus, this is the thalamus, so there is a slight dipping or you can identify this is the total hypoechoic, a bit more appearing, bit more hypoechoic is the caudate nucleus. Here you can see well defined, this is the black structure is your thalamus and the area which is in between these two area is your podothalamic groove. So this is a very important structure because the choroid plexus starts just posterior to it. If it crosses this point, then it is we suspect for the intraventricular hemorrhage over here. Okay. Yes, germinal matrix hemorrhage. So this is the chordothalamic groove. Then we see the thalamus. Then this is the choroid plexus. Okay. What which horn is this of the lateral ventricle? Which horn? So this is the frontal horn, this is the occipital horn, and this is the you know, occipital horn goes posterior. So this is the frontal horn is here. So this is the inferior horn. Okay. This is the still more lateral structure. Okay. So, here is the frontal lobe. Then, what is this lobe, which is the central part of the brain? Which lobe is frontal, occipital? Yes, this is the temporal lobe. Sorry, uh, parietal. No, this is not the temporal. This is the parietal lobe. Posterior is the occipital lobe. And below the sylvian fissure is our temporal lobe. So this, all of this structure, what you can see over here, this is the temporal lobe. Frontal, in the front part is the frontal lobe. Central part is the parietal lobe. This posterior part is called the occipital lobe. And the lower part below the sylvian fissure is our temporal lobe. And this is our cerebellum. Okay. Thank you so much. Any questions? Questions if are there, they are most welcome. So I could see there are no other questions. Thank you.
how to calculate volatility index. So uh, see, it is same as RI, but uh, we won't go into that detail thing in that. When we come with over there in the hands-on session, so we can discuss that resistive index and volatility index. For the today, the thing was mainly a focus at views and that has